<laughs> I have here a Rafael Gonzalez. This is the Asia Pacifico Regional Edition from 20 Regional Edition Cigars from Cuba are always special. So let's uh, get this cigar cut up, light it, and see if it's as good as we hope. Especially with Rafael Gonzalez, if you've had them before, they are, uh, I wouldn't say a, a lower end cigar, but they're recommended to smoke young. It's always fun here in the wonderful city of Portland, Oregon. Very colorful neighbors, lots of great sounds outside. Uh, let's get back to the star of our show. So a little bit more information about this, uh, this regional edition, Rafael Gonzalez. So this is again a Britannicus Extra Vitola. So that's five and three quarters by 48. Double perfecto, so the ends are tapered on both sides there. It's called the 88, as the number eight is significant and considered lucky in China. There are 8,888 boxes of 10 out there. So I went ahead and uh, clipped the top there, went with just a straight cut. You can see that. Uh, I do like to check the draw, especially on these double perfectos or anything with like a torpedo tip. Um, but as I know, a lot of folks like to hear those pre-light notes. That, honestly, it tastes very much like a Rafael Gonzalez cigar, uh, uh, you know, the smaller Corona size. Um, to give you a little more detail, you know, uh, chocolatey, spicy, it's a Rafael Gonzalez, it's a spicier side Cuban cigar, which is something you don't get a lot of in Cuba tobacco. I'm getting a lot of those uh, similar flavors on the uh, the pre-light here. So without any further ado, uh, let's light this puppy, smoke it, and see what we think. <laughs> Two matches out to do the trick. It's a uh, pretty narrow point there on the end. <laughs> Just toasted the edges a bit there uh, before I go in to lighter. One puff on the end just to make sure everything is lit well. I uh, missed a little corner there, but that should correct nicely. I feel like it's a bit of a cop out to compare it again to the standard production Rafael Gonzalez, but it really is very similar flavors right off the bat to those cigars. Uh, the key difference would be this is much smoother uh, off the light and uh, the flavors are more balanced. Anyways, I'm going to keep smoking here. We'll check in at least by the halfway point if we don't get any changes. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to check in early. I had done what I shouldn't have done and made an assumption that this cigar wasn't going to get more complex and flavorful and it has been surprising me. So I need to let you guys know uh, we're getting some nice leather notes, uh, a little bit more of that cocoa's coming in, but this cigar is definitely becoming much more interesting oh, and we will see how things develop further. Okay, so coming in at the halfway point, this thing has really actually started to take on a lot of those typical Cuban characteristics uh, that were absent in maybe the first third of the cigar, which I found kind of interesting. Um, and for those of you who have maybe smoked a lot of Nicaraguan cigars and Cuban cigars, uh, I would almost say that this is like kind of the perfect marriage of those two. This has a little bit of that Nicaraguan spice in there, but it's the mild Cuban version. And uh, now with those kind of core 
Cuban flavors coming in to blend, it really does feel like uh, like this kind of perfect marriage of, of what you could imagine, uh, like a nice Nicaraguan Cuban cigar would be like. A little bit of saltiness coming in, still leathery, um, very, very mild on the spice. Spice, uh, not in like strength of heat, uh, uh, more in flavor, the, the flavor of spice. Um, primarily coating the sides of my tongue now uh, with a, a white pepper flavor uh, would be the note there. Um, <clears throat> again, very good cigar. Uh, let's uh, catch up as we hit the bands. Burning beautifully, smoking perfectly. Um, very nice light spice uh, coats the tongue. Stronger cocoa and a little bit of dark chocolate flavors coming in there. Smooth on the retro hail. Definitely gonna land in the solid medium body camp. Uh, pretty much from start to finish. Maybe, maybe mild pretty early on and then moves right into a medium. And uh, that's where we've been sitting. So, uh, you know, early day cigar probably... Um, Definitely not the last cigar of the day for you if you uh, want a heavy hitter or something like that. Uh, great cigar, very well balanced. Definitely the uh, my personal favorite, let's say, of the Rafael Gonzalez uh, blend. The ash actually held on to about the halfway point, uh, which is pretty unusual for a Cuban. Uh, you don't get it's super long ashes even though they do that and two bar rolling yeah so let's take the bands off finish it up and we'll have one last check-in it's a good cigar let's uh, see if it's worth the price and the hype well the cigars getting pretty hot as we're getting into the uh, past the band point here I like my smoke nice and cool, and uh, you know one of the carnal rules of enjoying cigars is enjoy a cigar as long as you enjoy the cigar. Um, for those of you who like your smoke hot, definitely another 15 minutes out of this easy, um, but for me, I'm going to put it out for now. Price point's a little high. If you're a fan of the blend, it's worth trying. If you like to try the regional editions, if you like the Britannicus Vit Extra Vitola, uh, I'm a fan of it. Uh, try one. You know, if you can find a really good deal on a box and they're out there, you know, maybe it's worth trying for you. But that's up to you. You know, uh, a lot of places do want about $30 a stick. Um, so I'd leave that to you to decide. Uh, one thing I, I want to add here is uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Dutch cigars, and uh, he always does a little bit on the investment side of cigars. A little bit of upside here. Maybe with time, this will be a really great cigar. Right now, I think it's a very good cigar, very good mild, medium cigar. Uh, the best Rafael Gonzalez I've had personally. Um, if those things appeal to you, you should definitely check it out.